name is Michelle Doherty. I work at Imperial College in London and I'm Professor of Space Physics. Essentially what Cassini is doing at the moment is it's in its final phase of its life. And when I say it as boldly as that, it's actually quite sad. You know, we've been involved in Cassini. Well, it's been orbiting Saturn since July 2004. So we've been there almost 13 years now. But what we're doing is we're preparing to burn up in the atmosphere of Saturn. And the reason we're doing that is to make sure that the spacecraft doesn't crash on one of the moons where there might potentially be life. We want to make sure we don't do that. So we've had two phases to the end of the mission. One was called the F-ring orbits, where the closest approach of, this, of Cassini was just beyond the edge of the F-ring. And then we were on these long orbits taking us out to close to Titan. And now we're in the last phase of the mission where we are inside of the rings. So the rings are here and we're just above the atmosphere of Saturn and we're doing these crazy kamikaze dives every six and a half days. The science we're going to do, it's, there's lots of it, but from my perspective, the most important is we're going to be focusing on the internal structure of Saturn. We don't understand what its interior looks like. We think there's a solid core. There's probably a liquid region above that core which is somehow generating the magnetic field. Because Saturn is made up mainly of hydrogen, how are we going to have currents that are generated? One way in which we can do that is you strip the electrons off the hydrogen and so you get metallic hydrogen and so currents can flow. We think that's what's going on, but we aren't sure. Um, the other thing is it's quite embarrassing to admit this, but we've been there for 13 years and we still don't know how long a day is on Saturn. And the reason we don't know that is because the magnetic field we've been measuring is really strange. The standout thing that we've learned about Saturn is that it's different to what we expected. It's different to Jupiter. It's different to the Earth. I'm, I'm going to do it from a magnetic field perspective because I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to the magnetic field. We don't understand how the internal planetary dynamo is generated. Planetary dynamo theory tells you that the measurements we've made so far seem to imply you shouldn't have a dynamo at Saturn. It could mean two things. We're not measuring it properly, which is, I think, what it is. Or it could mean that the internal planetary field is dying. I think from my perspective, one of the coolest images of Saturn is the, the view of the North Pole where you see that hexagonal structure rotating in the atmosphere. And one of the things that scientists are doing is they're using the evolution of that atmospheric structure to understand how the dynamics of the atmosphere works. Because if you think about it, you can't really get into the atmosphere and make the measurements. Well, we're going to at the end of the mission, but we're not going to be there long because the spacecraft will begin to tumble and we're going to lose it. But by being able to remotely view the atmosphere and see how the structure changes over time, it allows you to understand the dynamics of the atmosphere. If material is coming up from below, uh, some of the instruments are able to tell you what kind of molecules and material are in the atmosphere. And so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of, it's almost like tasting the atmosphere without actually having to get into it. My favorite moon is Enceladus. And the reason I'm partial to Enceladus is it's, it's the moon that my team discovered a water vapor plume at. But not only is there liquid water underneath the surface, but there's organic material, there's a heat source. You know, when, when people get excited about the potential for life elsewhere in the solar system, there are four things that you need. You need a heat source, you need liquid water, you need organic material, and you need those three things to be stable over some period of time so that life could potentially form. At Enceladus, we've got three. We're not sure about the stability over time yet. Titan was a real focus of Cassini-Huygens. We've had over 120 flybys of Titan by the Cassini spacecraft. The European Space, AG, the European Space Agency Huygens probe traveled down through the atmosphere of Titan and landed on the surface. But Titan is a weird place. We thought there was liquid on the surface, but didn't find it for the first four years of the mission. And that was because it was the wrong season. It wasn't raining out of the atmosphere. But it's not liquid water, it's liquid ethane and methane. So what would it be like on the surface of Titan? A little bit weird, you know, you've got bits of petrol, liquid petrol lying around on the surface. Um, but also Titan is the only uh, moon in the solar system that has a dense atmosphere. 
which was why the Huygens probe traveled down through the atmosphere. And the reason we were so interested in Titan's atmosphere is we think it, it is very similar to what the Earth's atmosphere was like when it first formed. So it's almost like being able to go back in time and get an understanding about how the atmosphere will evolve in time. Music